Vedic Ramaswamy is a two-faced, lying fascist bastard. There was a debate about a week and a half ago, the first Republican debate that Donald Trump decided not to show up to, probably on the advice of his lawyers, because if he ended up saying some shit, he could incriminate himself. Right. That's where we are in American politics, where the Republican frontrunner is basically trying to stay out of jail because he's been indicted four fucking times for justifiably for crimes that he actually committed. Because the headliner wasn't there, then all of the small fry on the stage actually got to bask for a little bit. And one of the small, small fry that is actually trying to steal the nomination is Vivek Ramaswamy. So if you don't know who this guy is, he is a CEO of a pharmaceutical company, I think it was, something like that, and basically made a bunch of money by getting this one certain drug that didn't work and then hyping it up a lot, getting a lot of investors, and then pulling out and taking all the cash. It's basically he did a pump and dump is what he did. That's how he got all of his cash. Long story short, there's, it's a lot more complicated than that, but that's essentially what he did, was was a legal form of a pump and dump with a pharmaceutical company, which is bullshit. And he's kind of turned that around and sort of crafted himself as an anti-woke warrior, right? And that's what he does. He goes and he criticizes companies for having things like inclusivity training and stuff like that. So he's a giant piece of fucking garbage. His uh, latest claim to fame is that he wrote a couple of editorials and did has, has taken a stance that he wants to raise the voting age to 25, which is fucking ridiculous. Why does he want to raise the voting age to 25? Because young people overwhelmingly vote for Democrats. Why? Because young people hate fascists, and they want their government to do things about the issues that they care about. Things like drug legalization, things like uh, global climate change. That's a very, very big thing among young people. And rightfully so, because they know that they're going to be spending the rest of their lives dealing with the consequences of global climate change. Stuff that the Republican Party is just not willing to do anything about. In fact, during the exact same debate, Vivek Ramaswamy called the uh, he called the Democratic agenda for global climate change a hoax. Which is that's the thing about this guy is that he always uses weird like like weasel words and shit like that. He's like, I'm not saying climate change is a hoax. I'm saying the Democratic agenda to deal with it is a hoax. Which is what the fuck does that mean? It's a hoax. I mean, they don't have an agenda to deal with it. Like, no, it's he's a fucking weasel. So that's the first thing about this guy, but he wants to basically up voting rights instead of actually appealing to voters who are 18 years old and trying to take their concerns and doing something about it to and, and getting their vote that way. He just wants to take that vote away from them. That's the kind of guy this is, right? He's a two-faced fascist. So I have a video here. He went on CNN on Dana Bash's show. So what we're gonna do is we're going to turn on our capture. We're gonna reduce the size of this so I don't get copyright struck. Can I play this back faster? We're gonna go to 1.25 speed. That way this won't take us an hour to get through. And we're gonna listen to the full interview of Vivek Ramaswamy on Dana Bash's show here. This is right after the uh, Republican debate a week and a half ago. And let's see what the man has to say. Vivek Ramaswamy, thank you so much for joining me this morning, sir. I, I want to start with uh, what I began morning. the program with, which is this uh, racist shooter killing three black people in Jacksonville yesterday. What is your reaction to the shooting? It is such a tragedy and my heart goes out to those families. This should not be happening in the United States of America and it is wrong. The reality is we have a mental health epidemic in this country. There are reports <laughs> that this particular individual, the perpetrator, was indeed evaluated for mental Okay. 
So first off, first thing about Vivek Ramaswamy is that he has very little in original ideas of his own, okay? Using the the excuse that mass shooting is a side effect of mental health and not a problem with extremism or the easy availability of firearms is basically a Republican GOP cop-out 101. Here's the actual truth about it, is that I can guarantee you that he probably will not mention at all anything having to do with firearms whatsoever, or why it's so easy for somebody who is an extremist to get his hands on firearms. Remember this guy that we're talking about here? The shooter had swastikas, like, etched into his weapons. The The question that he was a white supremacist is, like, not even debated. It's like he obviously fucking was. The, the, the shooting was obviously racially motivated. And yeah, okay, you can say that, all right, anybody who would engage in a mass shooting like this is obviously uh, mentally ill. But I don't think so. I don't think so. What's the definition of mentally ill, number one, right? I mean, is it just somebody with psychosis? Like, yeah, okay, maybe the guy was, was a psychopath, something like that. Maybe he was a sociopath, whatever. But he was functioning enough in order to be able to afford his, to buy super expensive rifles. Because that's the other thing, is that these guys that get engaged in these mass shootings like this, they don't steal their weapons. Like, they don't have to. They can buy their weapons legally everywhere, so if the guy is able to hold a job and enough to buy weapons that cost hundreds if not thousands of dollars, can you really call the guy crazy? Can you call him mentally ill? I mean, no. I don't think any amount of therapy can make somebody not racist. That's the thing. It's... To call it that, oh, to say to say that, oh, just a, a mass shooting is all because the person is mentally ill. It's trying to make it sound like if we can just get this guy into therapy, if we can just get him the right proper care, he wouldn't have done it. That's not true. Like, no therapy can make you not racist. Like, racism isn't a mental illness, right? Racism is an ideal. <laughs> It's not, I mean, you know, that's what it is. It's not a, it's not a mental, you can't be like, you can't be like thrown into like the funny farm and shit because you're racist. Like, no, no, it's, it's an ideology and it, it's an ideology, which is actually protected speech. That's the other thing too. It is protected speech. The government is not allowed to like throw you in prison for being racist. It's just a, a way to blame it on something so that you don't have to address the actual issue. Actually, the actual issue is that this person was able to get their hands on a gun. Even if you do take that excuse, which that's really, it's what it is, it's an excuse. Even if you do buy that excuse that mass shootings is a, mass shootings are a symptom of, of poor mental health care in the United States, then why is it so easy for people who are mentally ill to get their hands on firearms? right? Why? And will you do anything about it? And I can guarantee you, Ramik, Ram, uh, Vivek Ramaswamy is not going to do jack shit in order to stop that, because why? Because he knows no one will vote for his ass. No Republican will vote for his ass. If he says anything at all, that can be interpreted as being anti-Second Amendment. Because the guy doesn't have any guts. He doesn't have any guts and he doesn't have any ideas because he's a worm. Continuing on. Mental health deficiencies as well. And I think we need to have to have the courage in this country to bring back a practice of putting back psychiatrically ill people who pose a risk to their communities into psychiatric institutions, not just drugging them up, but faith-based approaches and other approaches <laughs> that fill our longing for purpose and meaning in this country. I think it is okay. Faith-based approach. All right, all right. First, first thing. First thing. Okay. What's he trying to say? What? Committing people, forcibly committing people. Okay. You currently cannot forcibly commit someone to a mental institution unless they are 
in danger of harming themselves or others. So what's the standard for that? Well, apparently owning six or seven lethal weapons and having an ideology, which is like a racial based ideology, apparently that's not good enough in order to have somebody thrown in a mental institution. Now me personally, if I was writing it, you know, would I support that? No. And you know why I wouldn't support that? Because that could be too easily switched around in order to oppress people. Because who makes the determination of what is too radical? So that's the thing we also got to remember, right? Any law that says that takes away your freedom can be abused. Any law like that. So if we're going to create a law that says your ideology is too wacky, we're going to throw you on a mental institution. And even though it's like, okay, maybe you write this law to target white supremacists and anti-Semites and that kind of thing. And that's all well and good. And then you know what happens? Somebody like Vivek Ramaswamy becomes president and then suddenly that law is being used to throw people like you in prison because of whatever you believe. Maybe you're pro-LGBTQ. That's a, line, a step too far for these guys and they throw you in prison. And that's why something like that can't be allowed. It's like, no, <laughs> that can't be allowed. So that's the first thing. Now, I would be completely 100% for a background check that says you can't buy a gun if we find evidence of you being part of a white supremacist organization, for example. Like if you're part of a hate group and while they're doing a background check, say they check out your Twitter, they check out your uh, Facebook, whatever, they find out that you're part of like Nick Fuentes' group or some shit like that, that you're part of the Groiper Army, that kind of thing, or that you're a member of the Proud Boys or some shit, or the Three Percenters or the Oath Keepers or whatever, or some fucking militia group, or that you're making uh, posts on these uh, social media groups, violent posts. I would support a law that's saying, yeah, you're not allowed to have a firearm. Here's the thing about that. That could also be abused as well. I myself personally think that's acceptable. I believe myself personally that the less firearms on the street, the less people get shot. That's my take on it. I'm just a guy on the internet. You don't have to agree with me. That's absolutely cool. If you don't, I am not going to die on that hill. But that's just me. But I can also understand that what I just said is a major red flag. And many, many people in this country would rather die than accept what I just said. And I understand that that will never happen because of that. That many, 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 many people on this country, people on the left as well, not just right wing people who are like Second Amendment gun nuts. People on the left as well, many of them would gladly march headfirst into machine gun fire to prevent what I just said from coming true. So I understand that's just, you know, whatever. <laughs> it's never going to happen, even though every other country on Earth is able to balance this, is able to balance access to lethal weapons with what's best in the public good, and for some fucking reason we can't. I don't know why. <laughs> but that's just how it is in the United States. So we can't go either of those ways. So long story short, throwing someone in a mental institution because you don't like what they got to say is not going to happen, should not happen, and never will happen in this country. At least I hope so. So that's a non-solution from Vivek Ramaswamy when it comes to right wing uh not just right wing but just mass shootings in general and pretty much par for the course for the republican establishment we've been trained to not actually expect any solutions from them i don't expect there to be any solutions now excuse me the other thing he said there's faith-based approaches to mental health so what what does that mean exactly does that mean that the doctor is not a doctor but a priest or something so when you go and you get therapy, it's not actually from a, a psychiatrist or a psychologist or whatever, but like a pastor or like a youth fucking pastor or a priest or whatever 
is like fucking doing your mental assessments. Like, that's a bad fucking idea. The other thing to remember is that Vivek Ramaswamy is a Hindu. He's not Christian. So, faith-based approach. Like, which faith exactly? And is this faith-based approach going to accept Medicare? <laughs> right? Is, like, is tax dollars going to go to this? I mean, if you're the president, then that means that government money would... You're proposing to spend government money on this kind of thing? Or is he not proposing that? Is this just a thing he wants people to do on their own? See, it's a non-solution. It's a non-solution. Like, when he said that faith-based approach to mental health, that's not anything the government can engage in legally. It is against the law, or it should be against the law, for the government to favor one religion over another. So, why would he even say that? It's just like, and plus he doesn't believe in the same faith as the people who are going to conceivably be voting for him in the first place. That's just fucking a, a dog whistle. That's just candy. Candy to the base. Candy to the base of people that probably don't even know that the guy's like a Hindu. Like, I can guarantee you, number one, that he will not win the nomination because he's the wrong skin color. And But the reason why, even more than that, is because he's not Christian. So Republicans are not going to vote for his ass, right? Because that's the one thing that they still won't cross, is that he's not Christian. I mean, even, I remember... 2008 Mitt Romney was getting pushed back from from the Republicans because he was a Mormon and like Mormons are Christian but they're like a different denomination to the hardcore conservative evangelicals like being a Mormon it's like being a, a pagan it's like being a, a a Hindu they equate that kind of thing with atheists it's the exact same thing like to them being an atheist or a Hindu or anything that's not their style of Christian. It's like you might as well be a Satan worshiper. So already he's missing like the huge, massive chunk of the base. It's just going to write him off completely 100%. Straight up just because of bigotry. Not just because of the color of his skin either. I'm not saying racism. I'm saying bigotry against his religion. That's still a gigantic major thing among Republicans. So this guy has no fucking chance of winning. I mean, if anything that we should worry about is he could conceivably become the vice president, which would be bad. Because then, like, he'd be one fucking chicken McNugget induced heart attack away from the fucking White House. Like, <laughs> sitting in that Oval Office, like, that would be fucking... That'd be a nightmare if this motherfucker actually did become president somehow. Anyway, so it's just, it's bullshit. It's like it's a non-solution is what it is. Moving on just a shame that we even have mass shootings like this, be it the one that happened in Florida, be it the recent one, the Nashville shooter in a Christian school, killing six in a school. We have to address that mental health epidemic and we need leaders with the courage to do it. But my heart goes out so, to those families. And I Yeah, he had to bring that one up. He had to bring that one up because now you notice, folks, so that was the uh, trans woman, trans man, excuse me, who shot up a, a Christian school in Nashville, Tennessee. That happened in like, when, when did that happen? Like April, six months ago. You notice the conservatives are still talking about that shit. There's still memes about that out there, even though like we've had like fucking 50 billion mass shootings since then. I mean, there's usually a mass shooting every single day in the United States in some place. But there's been a dozen high-profile mass shootings since then. But that's the one they talk about. That's the one that he decided to bring up. Like, oh, we gotta, we need to stop these mass shootings, especially the one that uh, the one example of a trans person who did it. Never mind the 500 billion examples of fucking white supremacists engaging in mass shootings. Just like the one that just the one that they were talking about, the recent one. Right, where the guy was writing swastikas on his fucking guns. This is a mass shooter. You know, he's a white supremacists. Oh, let's forget all about that. Let's redirect it back to something that, you know, I can slander my political opponents for. I mean, it's like this guy has somebody from Gab writing his talking points for him, right? <laughs> That's what it is. And I just want to point this out to you guys. I want to point out the racism and the hate 
and the bigotry. Because one thing Vivek Ramaswamy is really good at is dropping dog whistles like this. Because I can guarantee you somebody like my mother, you know, my mother is 70 years old now, and she's politically active, but she's not hip to all of the dog whistles and stuff. And I can guarantee you she would watch this and not understand what that guy just said. Not get what that guy just said. She wouldn't, <laughs> she wouldn't pick up on the subtext. Right? Because a lot of boomers have it. Especially, like, the more conservative you are, the more likely you're going to fall for this guy's bullshit. And it's like, no, no, this dude is a fucking... This guy is a fucking fascist. He's like literally the exact same thing as Nick Fuentes. Like, except he's Hindu. And he wants to get in, he wants to become president in order to personally enrich himself. But there's very, very little difference from what this guy believes and Charlie Kirk believes or Nick Fuentes believes. Like, very, very similar. You know? Moving on here. I hope something like this never happens again. Mental health is one aspect of, of these shootings. And apparently, and we're still learning uh, a lot about uh, what happened. The, the facts are still coming out. Uh, also, this was very much apparently racially motivated. Uh, the sheriff there said point blank that this shooter had, uh, had manifestos coming, three manifestos, and Yes. said specifically that he went to this dollar store with the intent of killing black people. Yeah, he also had swastikas etched into his into his firearms. <laughs> right? I mean, it, it doesn't leave a lot of room for interpretation when you're using symbols like that written into your guns. Like, when you're drawing fucking Nazi shit on your actual guns that you went to go murder black people with. It doesn't leave a, lot, leave a lot of room for interpretation there. It's like, oh, was it really racially motivated? Well, what the fuck do you think? Did the swastika give it away? <laughs> anyway, moving on. I think that is heinous and deserves to be called out for what it is. The reality is we've created such a racialized culture in this country in the last several years that right as the last few burning embers of racism were burning out, we have a culture in this country largely created by media and establishment and universities and politicians that throw kerosene on that racism. And I can think of no better way to fuel racism in this country than to take something away from other people on the basis of their skin color. I've been saying... Okay, 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 okay. He's completely... All right. Now, this is double-speak fascism in action right here. Now, why are... And, th and here's the thing about this, right? It's not the first time I've heard this rhetoric. The idea that, okay, well, racism was over with in this country. No, it wasn't. It was far, far, far from being over with. Now, what is, what is he referring to, right? He's referring to Barack Obama when he says that. Okay. Racism was almost over in this country. We elected a black president. Yet racism was not over because we elected a black president. Not even close. Okay. If you look at the backlash, I mean, what was the backlash from electing a black president? It was getting a fucking con artist fascist. The worst fucking president ever <laughs> in Donald Trump. That's how bad they reacted, right? It was that, it was the Tea Party movement, which evolved into the Trump movement, which has encouraged white supremacy all over the country. Things like the Proud Boys and the Three Percenters and all that shit. Those things, those guys didn't exist prior to Barack Obama. That, 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 these are all things that have been in, created in the last, you know, 15 years or whatever, right? Their reactions to him, their reactions to basically to Barack Obama and then also the wider uh, movement of basically egalitarian movement behind him. And when I say that, I mean things like Black Lives Matter. I mean uh, just the, the movement to get gay and trans rights, right, and, and uh, third wave feminism, that kind of thing. 
right? Basically, over the last, uh, everything for the last 15 to 20 years, right? The online, rise of the online left, essentially. And starting to see things like uh, gender pronouns and stuff like that out in, in the world. Ideas of equality have started to take root in the larger society. And this is really where it came from. It, it started online. All of these things started online. And they've sort of starting to kind of take root now in the larger society. Corporations and stuff are starting to are starting to adopt some of these things as, as part of their official policies. Like, you know, you're not allowed to misgender people on purpose now. In most major corporations, they will have inclusivity training, basically saying, okay, if you misgender people on purpose, that's considered, uh, you know, that could be considered something like sexual harassment, for example. You know, if you do it over and over on purpose, it can be grounds for termination, that kind of thing, right? Stuff like that. And that's a sign when you start to see that kind of thing, when you start to see the establishment pick up on your language, that kind of thing. When you start to see that, when you start to see your, your, um, ideas and basically policies when it comes to race and gender and uh, sexual orientation, that kind of thing. When you start to see that getting picked up by corporate America, for example, that's a good sign that you're winning the, cor the culture war. You know, when you start to see uh, little chicken McNuggets and stuff having like waving pride flags and that kind of thing, that's a good sign that you're winning the culture war, right? love it or hate it a lot of people on the left hate it they think it cheapens the entire thing if you want your ideals to become normalized this is the way they become normalized right all of this shit is a backlash against that things like the these movements from the right wing are backlashes against these things um things like militia movements like the proud boys like rise of fascist groups like fucking the gripers that kind of thing right all of these states now and now they took you know the same kind of thing happened on the on the right as well you know you had all these right-wing groups sort of spring up in response to these left-wing uh left-wing ideals being integrated into the larger societies and now they've all sprung up in order to try to essentially retain control that's what they want. They want to retain control and they want to be able to legally discriminate the same way that they have been forever. They want still to be able to legally discriminate against gay people, against black people. They want to keep the laws the way they are so it dis disproportionately puts uh, black people in jail so that they can they can assault and murder gay people and trans people, stuff like that, and get away with it. That's what they want to do. They want to keep it like that. You know, there's, there's no fucking, like, there's no coincidence that black people go to jail more often, <laughs> right? It's not a coincidence. It's written like that on purpose in order to basically keep these people subjugated. I mean, that that basically, what that will take, a, that's, a, that's a subject for an entire stream. We could go on about how the rise of police departments around and how laws were written and, and how they're uh, disproportionately affects people of color in order to throw them in prison so that they can't vote shit like that we could we could do an entire stream on that but make no mistake it's all part of the greater white supremacist culture that pervades in the you know in the united states and they don't want that to change right vivek ramaswamy is basically hitching himself to that culture <laughs> and the thing about it is that he doesn't understand that they will turn on him just like they turn on anybody else who doesn't fit. Right? He thinks that, you know, because here's the thing about it, he's, he's basically betting on, you know, well, I'm one of the good ones. It's like, well, no. The, that's not how it's going to work. <laughs> right? And he's going to find out when he loses the fucking nomination that uh, doesn't matter how much of one of the good ones you are. You're not, you don't, you can't earn your way into fascism. 
you're it's like no you're part of the in group <laughs> or you're not it's not a thing that you can earn your way into it's completely full of shit I want to rewind it just a little bit about to right there and let's continue on an establishment and universities and politicians that throw kerosene on that racism and I can think of no better way to fuel racism in this country than to take something away from other people on the basis of their skin color. I've been saying that for years, and I think that is driving, sadly, a new wave of anti-black and anti-Hispanic racism in this country. A, what is he talking about? Is he talking about affirmative action? Taking away something on the basis of your skin color. You hear this a lot from right-wingers. Um, the average white american male is the most uh is the most discriminated person against in this country right i've yet to actually see anyone give me an example of something that has been taken away from a white cis american male and given to people of color or gay people what what exactly has been taken away from them right because he just said it that's what he just said right he just said i can think of no better way of fueling racism than by taking away something based on the color of somebody's skin right what is he referring to he's referring to white people being oppressed because that's the myth the myth from a lot of right wingers is that white people are oppressed what has been taken away from them what jobs no wealth <laughs> no is there a white people tax no white people still make more money than every other minority you know when you look at the demographics or something like that white people are still more likely to get a job than like say a, your average black person if a black person or a white person apply for the exact same job white person is more likely to get that job right even having a black sounding name just if you have a name that sounds black, Tyrone Green or something, you're already like not likely to get that job. If somebody has a white sounding name, you know, Bob Smith or something, it's like Bob Smith will is more likely to get the interview than Tyrone Green. And that's just straight up racism. And that's true. That's what it's like in the country. Right. So what exactly are they taking away? I mean, what? The ability to openly discriminate is the only thing that they've taken away. The only difference from now and, say, 1960. That's literally it, is that it is now not legal for you to openly discriminate, whereas back then it used to be. And that's what they want. They want that back. They consider that oppression because when you're the privileged class, then equality feels like oppression to you. <laughs> Am I wrong here, folks? I don't think I'm wrong. Continuing on. I think the right Sir, way is forward it, is, is if we want to stop hate and discrimination on the basis of race, Let's stop discriminating on the basis of race and see what unites us as Americans, because I, I do not think this kind of racial division and any division is good for us as the United States. I believe that there are a lot of people of color in this country who... You notice that he didn't try to give any kind of solution whatsoever. He didn't say anything. He just, just gave a bunch of, like, flowery bullshit rhetoric. Did he propose anything? Did he say, oh, we should have, like, inclusivity programs or whatever like that? Did he try to do anything like that? No. He basically tried to blame racism on leftists and Democrats, is what he did. Because he's a Republican. Republicans don't have solutions. All they can do is blame things. Right? Republicans don't have solutions at all. Their solutions are kill the other guy. It's the other guy's fault. Right? Take away rights from people. That's the only fucking solution that he has. Moving on who don't think it was just lasting embers of racism, but that a lot more work had to be done, particularly given the history of the, the 
uh, systemic racism in this country with slavery and beyond. I want to ask you about a comment that you made about white supremacy in Iowa on Friday. I've never once encountered that yet. I'm sure the I'm sure the boogeyman white supremacist exists somewhere in America. I've just never met him. <laughs> never seen one. Never met one in my life, right? Maybe I'll meet a uh, maybe I'll meet a unicorn sooner. And and maybe those exist too. So, just because somebody has an Okay. I believe that, by the way, what he just said. I believe that. Now, first off, it's bullshit. Let's not forget that because you know it's just an antidote right so it's doesn't mean anything that doesn't mean that there's no racism just because he personally himself hasn't met one but i do believe that he is correct when he says that he has not experienced any racism and you know why because he's rich and when you're rich it doesn't matter because you have money <laughs> and being rich is the best cure for racism it is being rich is the best cure for racism. Just look at Kanye West for crying out loud. You know, why is Kanye West allowed to, why is he embraced by Nazis and white supremacists? Why is a black man basically the leading voice for white supremacism in the country now, right? Because he's rich and he can get away with it because he's rich. And all the Nazis and the white supremacists are going to be like, yeah, right on Kanye. You know why? Because it serves their purposes. Because it's like, oh, here's a black guy saying the stuff that we're saying. So they can hide behind that and say, see, I'm not racist. Kanye West is saying it and he's black. First off. Secondly, because he's rich. And when you're rich in this country, you get to do and you get to say and you get to whatever you want. You get to be whatever you want. And people will kiss your ass. So... Yeah, of course he didn't experience any racism because he's a fucking millionaire CEO. For He's not being put in the situations that he will find racism, right? He's not, like, going into the deep south and shit like that. You know, he's not living in the poor areas where people will just, like, fucking sundown towns and stuff where people will drive by and threaten you, that kind of thing. He's not experiencing that stuff. No, he's experiencing his life as people who are kissing his ass because they want his money. Because they either work for him or they want his money. And so that's why, oh, everybody's great to me. I've never experienced racism either. Yeah, because you fucking surround yourself with a bunch of people that want, you know, that want your money. So obviously they're going to be fucking nice to you. It's the dumbest shit ever. I always thought to myself, if I ever struck it rich somehow, I don't know found oil in my backyard or something or if I uh, found a gold mine or if I won the lottery or something and if I had kids after that I would not give my kids any money until they turn 40. You'd be like that's it you ain't getting shit you know here's a trust fund when you turn 40 you get this money you got to survive now. You know why? Because having super huge amounts of money like that distorts your worldview. Growing up super rich with everything that you've ever wanted distorts your worldview. And it's like, no, <laughs> you know, just just look at uh, look at Donald Trump, look at Paris Hilton, look at every other super duper rich person who's gotten every single fucking thing spoon fed to them from the moment that they were like born. They have no fucking clue how the world works. They have no idea what people really think or how they really are. And the really shitty thing is that they're the ones with all the money, so what they say goes. Right? They're the ones that get all the money. They're the ones that get all the power. They get to decide what the policies are. They get to decide how the fucking world is going to progress. And it's no fucking wonder that the world is so goddamn fucked up. And everything's falling apart when you got a bunch of rich assholes running everything. Rich assholes who have never don't know what like it's really like out there <laughs> don't know how desperate people really are don't know the the results of the policies that they push and how much it fucks everything up and how much the world is falling fucking falling apart because of the shit that they put into place they don't know any of that 
the same way that the CEO of your company is disconnected from the actual workers and doesn't know how their policies affect the actual workers. Oh, we're all coming back into the office. Yeah, in the meantime, oh, COVID is over with and then, you know, six people catch COVID the week that we all go back or whatever. In the same way that they don't understand that. Oh yeah, we're gonna be more efficient when you work from the office, you know, when you spend two hours commuting every day and $120 on gas that you didn't have to spend before. That makes you more efficient, huh? It's dumb. They, it's because there's a disconnect. Because they don't understand how the world really is. Right? That's what this guy is. He's an asshole CEO. Right? Who thinks that because he's rich, that, that makes his ideas somehow superior. And in real life, it's not. Moving on. Encountered one doesn't mean that the notion of white supremacy doesn't exist as a threat in America. What do you think goes through the minds of the families of the three victims in yesterday's shooting when they hear you say that white supremacy is basically a fantasy? I'm sure they're grieving for their loss, and I don't want to politicize those victims. Dana, this is a very sensitive situation where we should have nothing but foremost respect for those victims and not bring them into partisan politics. But I was responding to a question where someone asked me, what, have I, what racism have I experienced in recent years? And I answered honestly, most of that racism has come from the modern left. It's happening during the course of this campaign. Kara Swisher called all right, this should be rich. Calling me Rama Smarmy the other day and reveling in, in making twists of my last name. People effectively reducing me to the color of my skin and my attributes. That comes today from the modern left. But the reality well, is, do you acknowledge, this is part though, of a that dogma white supremacy in this country. does still exist in the United States? All right. That's bullshit. <laughs> That's absolute bullshit. Okay. Making fun of somebody's name. I mean, I guess it can be racist, but uh, the guy is swarmy. He is. He's he's a fucking like stuck up, like. I mean, am I do I have the wrong idea of what that word means, swarmy? Because I always thought swarmy meant that you're like stuck up and you're you're you think your shit doesn't stink. You're you're sniffing your own farts kind of thing. He is. That's exactly what he fucking is. Right? And that's the thing. Here's the thing, right? Any normal person out there would right off the bat say, yes, white supremacy exists in this country. Anybody who interacts with normal people out in normal contexts, just with friends or family or walking down the street or just meeting strangers or whatever or dealing with whatever. Anybody out there will see that, yes, white supremacy is most definitely a thing, right? I mean, I can tell you, even in, I live in liberal California, in like the second most progressive city on earth, you know, the exception of San Francisco is probably more progressive, maybe Seattle. But I live on the enlightened coast where everybody's cool with each other. And uh, no, no, racism is alive and well, even in California, even in some place like California, which is notorious and supposed to be all enlightened and shit. Tons of fucking racists everywhere, <laughs> right? I mean, if it's this bad in Los Angeles, what must it be like in a small town in Louisiana somewhere, right? Vivek here doesn't encounter that shit because he's rich he's rich and he's powerful and so the places he goes the people he interact with he interacts with they kiss his ass because they want his money so nobody's ever going to be a dick to him no one's ever going to kick him out of a restaurant because he's the wrong color no one's ever going to be a, like a, a jerk to him in, in line cut in front of him in line at Target or something like that and then, like, call him names and claim that, oh, you stole my job, shit like that. That's not going to fucking happen to him. No one's ever, like, no, that none of that shit's going to happen to him. Because it's not something that is exists in his purview, like, at all. He will never encounter that stuff. Because everywhere he goes, there's some sycophant 
with a bow tie saying, Right this way, sir. Your table's over here, sir. You think Vivek Ramaswamy does his own grocery shopping? No. <laughs> you think he does his own grocery shopping? Fuck no. Fuck no. Right? You think he does any sort of errands at all? No. Do you think he takes his own dog to the vet? No. Do you think he gets the oil changed on his car? No. Not at all. He doesn't do any of the normal shit that you or I do. No rich person does. People like Vivek Ramaswamy, who just basically their entire lives were like trust fund children. Like, this guy, Ramaswamy, his like family owns like, they're, they, they own like one of the largest companies in India. Okay, so this dude is not like a rags to riches kind of guy. He wasn't like growing up in the slums in India, working in a sweatshop and shit like that until he was 12 and then, you know, learned how to read out of his own volition and then like, you know, slowly crawled his way up from poverty. No, he didn't. He was born rich. His parents were already super fucking rich. He went to the best schools, right? He had access to all the wealth and power from the moment he was born. So... He's basically the exact same fucking thing as Trump. Just not as rich as Donald Trump. That's what it is. Just another fucking douchebag CEO who thinks because they were born with, like, multiple zeros in their bank account that they should fucking run everything. Because he was able to, like, create, take his wealth that he was born with and, like, parlay that into, like, you know... A corporation that he could use to rip people off with that somehow means that he should now be able to like decide what laws the rest of us fucking obey it is personally disgusting this is why this is why i hate business people business people that like want to become politicians fuck them fuck all of them this guy donald trump mitt romney all of them fuck each and every one of them why is he doing it so that he can enforce some fucking fucked up personal conservative agenda and force everybody to live the way that he wants to live while simultaneously ripping us all off and personally enriching himself on the side that's what every single one of these motherfuckers do and i have no reason to believe that he would be any different because he's giving the same standard republican bullshit answers bullshit non-answers excuse me as everybody fucking else. Up to and including, oh, racism doesn't exist. Oh, racism was going away. Oh, the right, the, the right wing, you know, there's no racism there. It's the leftists that are, that are spreading racism. Oh, I'm only seeing racism from the fucking, the radical left. Get the fuck out of here. And I could guarantee you that we will not find any example of actual fucking racism coming from anybody who you could even conceivably call a leftist at all the same way that nobody made fun of Mitt Romney's religion back in 2008 nobody on the left was like don't vote for this guy because he's a Mormon nobody fucking said that right same way that nobody said don't vote for Sarah Palin because she's a woman Nobody on the, no Democrats said that. Nobody on the left said that. You know who did say that, though? Republicans. <laughs> the same way that the Republicans are saying don't vote for Vivek Ramaswamy because he's not a Christian. And it's just funny how, like, this guy turns around and just says the exact opposite of what's actually true. Let's watch a little bit more of this and then we'll call it a night because it's already been about 45 minutes. But I want to go a little bit further because we've only gotten about four and a half minutes into it. Let's continue. I acknowledge that all forms of racial animus exist in the United States, including fringe branches. I mean, that's clearly what was at the, at the head of this mentally deranged individual responsible for this shooting, yes. But I think there are many forms of mental derangement that cause us to see one another on the basis of our skin color and our attributes. And I think what we need to revive, Dana, and it's my job. At okay, here's the other thing, folks. Just a very quick note. It's not so much all right, so this person, this mass shooter, was a white supremacist. He was a Nazi. And Vivek here is saying, okay, well, that's a fringe thing. And yeah, okay. 
the vast majority of conservatives are not white supremacists. But it's getting hard to call it a fringe movement when, for example, the second most popular Republican frontrunner, Ron DeSantis, is putting out ads with white supremacist imagery in them. You remember that, Dad? About two weeks ago, with the, the sun, uh, the the sundial thing, or what do you call it, the sun blazing thing behind it, big ass Nazi fucking ad that he put out, and then immediately took down. Oh, we didn't mean to do that. Sure, you fucking did. Sure, you did. It's a little hard to call this stuff fringe now. It's real. It's a little hard to say. Oh, this is just some fringe thing that you know. We don't actually believe in that. Yeah, right. When, like, the guy that, you know, the guy that most likely would get the nomination when Donald Trump goes to prison is catering to those people, right? And the other thing is that if you take Vivek Ramasamy's stances on a lot of this stuff, it's nearly identical to Ron DeSantis's, right? When you take things like immigration... Or, stand, or uh, issues like immigration, or issues like voting rights, that's another one. Vivek Ramaswamy is even more reactionary on voting rights than Ron DeSantis. He's worse on voting rights than Ron DeSantis. You know? But if you take other issues like uh, like climate change, you know, pollution, that kind of thing, and there's virtually no distinction between him and Donald Trump and Ron DeSantis... And Charlie Kirk. Right. There's no distinction between any of them. They all believe the exact same shit. It's just that people like fucking Charlie Kirk and Nick Fuentes are just more openly racist about it. So if you believe the exact fucking same thing as the white supremacists then why should I believe that you're not a white supremacist, right? Even at the very least, if he's genuinely not one, he's catering to these people. He's too chicken shit to straight out condemn them. Right here. This is his opportunity. He could just be like, yeah, I don't support white supremacy. I don't want anybody who's involved in any white supremacist groups or whatever to give me money. I don't want you people to vote for me. He could just straight out say that. He's not saying that. He's saying, well, these are fringe groups. Fringe groups, but the real racists are on the left. It's because he's ideologically aligned with these people. Because this fucking guy is a fascist. <laughs> As the leader, hopefully, is the next president to do this. To revive our doctrine of e pluribus unum not just celebrating our diversity and our skin-deep attributes, but celebrating what unites us across that diversity. That's what we've forgotten in the United States of America. Our true strength is the set of ideals that unite us. That's my job to revive as our next president. And I okay. Ideals that revive us, what are they? It's basically what he's advocating for is like a religious religious sort of fascism. That's what it is. Let's continue. Diversity in our skin deep attributes, but celebrating what unites us across that diversity. That's what we've forgotten in the United States of America. Our true strength is the set of ideals that unite us. That's my job to revive as our next president. And I think that the next generation in particular is so starved for that starved for commonality, starved for a nation that is unified, bigger than the sum of its parts, that's what we need to recreate in this country. And to those who say the okay. remedy to past discrimination is present discrimination, I say no. The right remedy is actually abandoning all discrimination and moving forward with colorblind meritocracy that in the United States. Mm -hmm. Colorblind meritocracy, yeah, okay. What is he actually saying? Religious-based fascism is what he's trying to say. That's the first thing. 
Second thing, when he says colorblind meritocracy, that is also another dig against the left. Basically the idea that leftists and stuff don't support meritocracy, like getting rid of affirmative action, for example. It's just an excuse in order to dismantle structures of equality. Right? So, no more any kinds of programs that try to help minorities. None of that stuff, getting rid of all that. So what does that mean? Getting rid of things like welfare, getting rid of things like food stamps, right? Getting rid of any kind of program that goes to help poor people. I've had it explained to me many times that white supremacists have nothing against welfare. And I would say that, you know, they don't like welfare. And why is it they don't like welfare, though? They don't want to pay for welfare because that money goes to people who aren't white. Many times, go ask a Republican or a conservative, a Nick Fuentes type. Go ask one of those people. Somebody who's a little bit more fringe, as, uh, as Ramaswamy would put it. Ask them why, for example, a country like Sweden or Denmark is able to provide welfare for their citizens. Why they can have things like universal health care. Why they can have things like UBIs. right? Why they can have things like uh, where they have free housing for people to get them off of the streets. Homelessness is like a problem in these countries, yes, but they handle it way better than we do in the United States. Why is that? Because they provide people with houses. How do they do it? Talk to any of these guys and say, how is it that these countries are able to handle these types of social problems and we can't? The answer you will get back from them is because they have a monoculture. That's the answer you'll get back. This is what you'll hear from somebody who's a little bit more, you know, on the racist side in the Republican Party. Someone who's like a Nick Fuentes kind of guy, you know, a groper kind of dude. You know, like the same kind of people that put forward that racist Nazi ad for Ron DeSantis, those kinds of guys. This is what they'll tell you. They'll say, it's fine when you're in Sweden or Denmark or Norway in order to pay taxes for social programs because, the, because they have a monoculture, i.e. because it goes to white people. And the reason why in the United States that they don't want to support any of these programs is because their money goes to non-white people. That's exactly what they will say. And that is exactly what Vivek Ramasamy is saying right here. Right? Because when he says that, oh, it's a we want to go to a meritocracy, that's basically a code word for saying we want to make sure that none of our tax dollars goes to helping non-white people. That's what he's trying to say, right? Because that's the criticism when you say something like affirmative action, for example. Just using that as an example, right? What's the big criticism that you always get from right-wingers? When they say, we shouldn't have affirmative action, why? Because then people who are not deserving are able to get into college. In real life, that's not how affirmative action works. In real life, the college goes out and recruits people of color from certain populations they'll try to get black people they'll try to get latinos they'll try to get uh, people that are poor and are of usually certain uh, ethnic backgrounds why is that right because it is illegal and it was already illegal for the last 30 years or so to go out and use racial quotas. That was something that was outlawed back in the 90s. It used to be like that. It used to be colleges would go out and they'd say, okay, we want to get this many black people and this many Latinos and this many Asians, blah, 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 blah. That got overturned in a Supreme Court case. I can't remember the name of the actual case, but that became illegal. And college were not, no longer allowed to use racial quotas like that, right? So what did affirmative action actually turn into? Well, it turned into trying to actively recruit people from certain populations. But here's the thing about it, is that the college 
has minimum entrance standards. Every college has. Every college says has a test, and you have to pass this test. And if you can't pass that test, you don't get into the college. So it doesn't matter what your skin color is. It doesn't matter if you got in on an affirmative action program, right? If you don't pass the test, you don't go to the school. So everybody who gets in with an affirmative action program was able to pass the college entrance exams. So there's nobody there who's unqualified to be there. And that's the thing that conservatives and racists <laughs> and reaction, you know, reactionaries for years and years and years have always misrepresented about a, a affirmative action. So now affirmative action is now illegal. It has been overturned completely. Colleges are no longer allowed to use any kind of affirmative action program at all. It was actually overturned by a court case involving an Asian person because that was another thing is that it was sued by like lots of uh, for years. Lots of Asian people are saying things like, well, I wasn't able to get into this college because of affirmative action, which is bullshit. That's not how it works. We can talk about that later a different time. That's a subject for a different video. In fact, I have like multiple streams where I've talked about this already. But long story short, no, that's not how it works. But that's how they got it outlawed. So now it's illegal to do that, right? This is what Ram, yeah, this is what uh, Ramaswamy is is getting at here. Now they want to take away basically every kind of government program that would help anybody who's poor and also happens to not be white. That's what he means when he says merit-based. So all of that stuff, Section 8, <laughs> right? Section 8 housing, any kind of help that you would get, you know, food stamps or school lunches, all of that shit going away. Because all of that, uh, according to him, those are all things that people are getting not based on merit, but based on the color of their skin. Even though in real life, white people are the largest recipients of welfare, of all of these things, white people take advantage of these things just as much as minorities do. But doesn't matter. <laughs> this, is, this is fascist America. They want to turn it back to the way it was during the 1940s. The 1930s and the 1940s. When they ran everything... They didn't pay any taxes for anything, right? There was no such thing as any kind of government programs to help anybody, right? Maybe not in 1940s, maybe more like the 1920s before they want to turn it back to before like a New Deal America. They want to turn it back to like how it was during the Gilded Age, during the 18, the late 19th century, when people were poor and desperate and would take any wage and corporations could just do whatever the fuck they want and the government you know the police could just murder people the cops could just shoot you in the back if they felt like it if they quote unquote know you were guilty of a crime they could just kill you and get away with it white people could just lynch black people and get away with it when your boss could just fire you if you don't give them a blowjob on command or have sex with them and get away with it. When women basically were forced to stay at home, forced to get married because they couldn't get bank accounts, they couldn't get work, and the work they did get paid nothing and completely get away with it. When they could employ children. That's another thing you're seeing from like conservatives and shit like that. What was it? Uh, what was it? Fucking Alabama? where uh, Governor fucking Sarah Huckabee and shit is like passing laws making it so that kids can go work in coal mines and restaurants and shit now instead of going to school, right? Making it easier for that to exploit fucking children, you know? That's their answer, by the way. If you're wondering what the conservative Republican answer to a labor shortage is, like during that, like, you know, like COVID, we had a, we had a labor shortage, because people were staying home and not working because they didn't want to fucking die. They were saying, oh, there's a labor shortage and nobody wants to work anymore. Blah, 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 right? 
the conservative answer to that is to employ children. That's that's the conservative answer to a labor, a quote unquote labor shortage. And, uh, you know, rising wages. That's another thing that came out of covid. People realize, well, I'm coming back to work, so I'm not going back to the same fucking shitty ass job I had before. I'm getting a better job and it better pay more or else I'm not doing it. Right. What's their answer to that? Exploit children. That's their fucking answer. Because they want to change it back. Yeah, they want to change it back to how it was during the fucking Gilded Age. And Ramaswamy wants that to happen. He's This guy is the exact same thing as Mitt Romney. He's the exact same thing as, he's a, as Nick Fuentes. Just with a Hindu coat painted on it. Trying to disarm you by thinking the color of his skin. Oh, okay, well he's not a white person so he can't be racist. That's another thing that people in this country have been trained to believe, is that only white people can be racist. Only white people can be white supremacists, right? Only white people can be... No. Not at all. That's not true at all. This guy's a two-faced fucking scumbag. Like... It's, like, worse than I thought. You know, like, I thought, like, when I first heard about him, I'm like, oh, okay, he's just another sort of... Another sort of shifty corporate type. And then I heard, oh, now he wants to take away kids' voting rights. Okay, that's fucked up. And the more I dig into this guy, the worse he becomes. The worse he becomes. This dude is like... Ter- He's just as bad as, as Trump, in my opinion. I think he would fuck this country up as bad as Donald Trump has. Maybe not quite as bad. Maybe he wouldn't get us into World War III like Donald Trump was, right? Maybe he wouldn't be cozying up to fucking, like, Kim Jong-il and stuff like that. Trying to nuke hurricanes and that kind of thing. But his policies would have the same fucking effect. Would fuck up the economy. Would roll back civil rights advances back to the fucking 18 fucking 90s. There's no fucking difference, folks. That's enough of this for now. I, we got through what? We got through five minutes of it. I think that's a new personal record for me. Anyway, guys, please don't elect fucking Vivek Ramaswamy. And I'm appealing also to conservatives out there. This is, you know, really, if you're a conservative and you're watching this, right, this is the fucking guy that you want to let go with. This two-faced little weasel. That's the guy. You know what this guy is? He's like your boss when you're at work and your boss like says something really fucking dumb and you have to compliment him on it because he's your boss or he, he he like says a fucking like sexist joke or something or whatever and you have to laugh you have to giggle because it's your boss and if you don't giggle then it's like that'll make you bad and you might get laid off like the next time fucking you know the next downturn whatever it's like that's the kind of guy this is this is a guy that's just like his entire life has had people sucking up to him so much that it's warped fucking reality for them for him and then he wants to like become president so that he can enforce his warped fucking reality on everybody else fuck him and everybody who thinks like him hello folks if you like what i do and you want to support the channel please consider buying something from my sd shop supporting me on patreon liking and subscribing and checking me out across my social media links listed below Thank you all so much and see you next time.